Hello and welcome back to the Spiritual Warrior Experience. In today's video, I'm going to be focusing on the practical method, well, the first of three practical methods really to uh, awaken consciousness. And this is based off of the poll that I recently put out on the channel. So these will kind of lead into each other with the third video being a more advanced practice that really is helped by the foundations in these first two. So let's get into it. When I began to meditate in late 2017, I would meditate for 10 or 15, 20, maybe even 30 minutes at a time. And I was it's very, it was very difficult for me. Um, and I would get that meditation time in and then I would go and I would go to work and I would spend time with friends and I would play video games, and do all the regular things in my day. And I did this throughout 2018 and 2019 and a lot in 2020. Um, I spent a lot more time meditating more and more in that time and even further in 2021, although I would occasionally fall out of the habit. And I didn't really begin to cultivate presence until this year, even though I would meditate often uh, and I was cultivating presence during meditation, I wasn't doing so moment to moment. And that's really what this first practice is about. This line represents the beginning of the day and the ending of the day. And it, it, this line, it really is the, it's the present moment. It's the now. We can think of our awareness or our consciousness as this red line. Well, really, we can, we can conceptualize it. Now, this red line is, this is the ideal, right? We wake up, we're aware, we're fully present, we're not distracted by thoughts in the intellectual mind or emotions in the emotional mind um, or impulses in the physical mind, you know, we're very fully in control of our vehicle, our body, our physical body. And unfortunately, this really, <laughs> this is not the case for most of us, right? What do we actually look like? Well, we look like this. Our thoughts, the moment we wake up, we go from you know, first thought, and then that kind of leads into a second thought, and that leads into a third, and a fourth thought, and a fifth thought, and a sixth thought. And then maybe our phone goes off, or we realize the time, and we follow that thought, and it just sort of repeats, right? This is that this is our actual situation. We are just carried away by a river of thoughts. And this is why. You know, as above, so below. This is why we dream in this way. If you have been keeping a dream journal and you've been starting to remember more and more of your dreams, you'll notice that dreams operate in the same way where we go, oh yeah, I was having a this dream and then this was, thing was happening and then that thing was happening and this and that. And then, you know, it just, it flows like this. But of course in the astral, because this is that the astral dimension is beyond time and space, just like how thoughts are, the dreams, like thoughts and emotion, dreams can shift from one direction to the other almost, you know, instantaneously. So how do we, how do we fix this? It starts by struggling to stay aware. You can see on this chart, in this graphic, that the red line drifts off. We have a few thoughts. And then this person remembers, oh, I need to be present. I need to be in the now. I was distracted and returns back to the line of presence and, you know, is aware and present for a little while and then drifts off, has one, two, three, maybe even four thoughts and then goes, oh, distracted again, thinking about whatever, back to the present moment. And then in this third segment here, we have a little more, a little more presence, a little more in the now. And then drifts off in the thoughts and back again. And then present, and then drifts off and back again. And then there's a real brief little, in this last segment here, there's a little 
brief drift off and then back to the present. And then, you know, it continues into maybe the end of the day. Maybe this is a meditation session at the end of the day, even if you want to think of it that way. But really, meditation should extend into our entire being, our entire day. And it's very difficult to do this at first, which is why we must sit and meditate. We must learn to sit, relax, concentrate, and, you know, and build from there, there's, there's, you know, further steps from that, but those are relaxing and concentration. That's, that's something we need to do all the time. You know, if we're eating lunch, we shouldn't have tensed muscles and we shouldn't be thinking about other things. We should just eat lunch. If we're out on a walk, you know, don't let the mind wander while walking, be in the moment, appreciate nature or, or you know, your environment, and maybe even question the environment. Am, am I awake? Am I in a dream? It's, that's a great, way to do reality checks. And that actually is related to the third video, that, that the third method. But this is the foundational practice. And really the important thing to remember is that if you're doing something and you find that the mind is wandering, go back to that task. Just always be in this present moment. You know, we have those moments in life where maybe we almost get into, we get into a fender bender or a near, a near miss into a car accident and it shocks us into awareness. And and that present moment is more vivid and more aware, more alive than you know any moment before that. Even if we might be terrified or afraid, it, we're very aware and present. And that is a really good little you know reminder to be present. So that you know that's what it should be like outside of the, the ego of fear and and all those things. Just but that vivid aw- awakeness is what we're attempting to cultivate with this practice, and you will cultivate it with time. And so, of course, what does it look like after some time of doing this practice, maybe months or weeks? Eventually, you'll start having a day that looks more and more like this, where you're present for long periods of time, and then you have a wandering thought or an emotion or an impulse, and you quickly catch it, oh, and then you back to the present. And then, you know, some more time goes by, and you're back to the present. You know, distracted back to the present, distracted back to the present. This, this, This cycle shortens, and... This takes many months and even in years, honestly, to really you know get to this point. Even I'm really only only starting to get to this point, and I've been practicing this particular method now for about seven or so months. Um, it really takes a lot of effort, and not every day will be exactly like you know the same. Some days will be you'll you'll forget, and you'll um, just become distracted by thoughts and emotions for several minutes or maybe even hours. And then, you know, catch yourself like, you know, like almost like noticing that there's a snake in your lap suddenly like, Oh, whoops. Oh no, I should be present. You know, it it should be like that. It should be like a, a sudden, Oh no moment when we realize that we're not present. And that's not to say we should be afraid or we should be, you know, fearful of it. We should simply just be vigilant, like, like warriors. And when we notice that, an enemy has infiltrated our castle, you know, an ego has infiltrated our intellectual mind, our emotional mind, our physical mind, our castle, we should identify it and then, you know, eliminate it. Remember our divine mother, ask her to eliminate that ego that is arising. Say, you know, please, my divine mother, dissolve this defect or please, my divine mother, you know, eliminate this defect. And of course, Um, practicing alchemy or transmutation, pranayama will help immensely with this in addition. So the three minds, remember we have an intellectual, an emotional, and then as you can see in the red here, this is the physical mind. And the physical mind is made up of the motor, instinctual, and sexual mind. Now we know that if someone has a severe neck injury, they can be paralyzed from the neck down. That's because that's where the motor mind is located. And that does connect to our chakra network as well. But this mind is is very deeply connected to the instinctual and the sexual minds as, as well. And really the whole system is sort of interconnected, but these three minds in, in particular are very connected. If you find yourself overwhelmed by lots of thoughts, you know, flowing thoughts and emotions. The important thing is to prioritize one thing at a time and focus on each thing only. So, you know, if you know that you have to do five things, get three to five things done, focus on the first one and only think about that one. Do that. And then once that's completed, do the second thing and the third thing, et cetera, right? 
And relating to the emotional mind, this is where our intuition is developed. So the the O mantra, you know, O, the famous Om is related to this, but even just O as in holy, O, that mantra in meditation can help to develop our intuition. Or just meditating on the heart center and meditating on love and that part of the body can be very beneficial with our intuition. And really, the mind that most of us are you know, very aware of or familiar with is the intellectual mind. This has, you know, is related to the third eye chakra. And for a lot of us, it's very atrophied um, in some ways, even because we're, uh, well, it's atrophied in some ways related to our imagination or our conscious imagination, but it's also overutilized. We, we rely on our intellectual mind so much, particularly if you're in a very intellectual um career and you're using your mind all day. So for that, I would say uh, balance it out with emotional activities, meditate to music, uh, learn some art, you know, just some sketching or, or co- this is why coloring books are so popular with people who do very intellectual things all day um, because it, it, it gets you out, it gets us outside of that intellectual mode and gets us into an emotional mode. And, and you know, just be aware of, of, what we're, of what you're doing. If you're coloring, if you're listening to music, don't let the mind begin to wander, the intellectual mind. Don't let emotions wander all over the place. Just simply self-observe and be aware. Really, it's it's about focus, right? It's about doing things consciously. If you're washing dishes, only wash the dishes, not just physically, but intellectually and emotionally. If you're washing dishes or if you're going on a walk, but your thoughts are all over the place about what you did yesterday or what you said yesterday or what you're going to do later that day or tomorrow or next week or in a month, if you're thinking about all these things, you're really, it's it's an unfocused, unbalanced state of our three minds, right? If the physical mind's doing dishes, but the, but the intellectual mind's thinking about worries and the emotional mind is, is worrying about the thinking about worries, it's, can you, it's like very unbalanced, right? And so our dreams will reflect this unbalancedness. And, you know, they might be all kinds of things in our dreams. And, and if we begin to focus our awareness on one thing at a time, it will help us to awaken in our dreams and we will become more lucid and we will eventually even have astral projections as well. And if you're interested in Kabbalah, you may be wondering, how does this apply to that? How does this apply to Gnosis? Where is the direct experience? That's a great question. If we look at this idealized line of presence, we'll see that we can actually think of this as a vertical line and relate this to the line of being. And if we overlay this vertical line of presence with our actual situation or even our situation when we're struggling, we can then see how it's a helpful form, helpful play on a form for us to consider what those thoughts and emotions are. They're thoughts of the past or of the future, right? They're thoughts about the horizontal line of of life. And what we want to do is be on the vertical line in the now. And this vertical line, the more that we're in it, the more we are moving into and becoming conscious of the superior levels. And the more unconscious we are, the more we allow projections or holograms, illusions, which are memories of the past or the future, the more we allow those to fascinate us, to distract us, the less energy we're giving to our present moment, our consciousness, and we drift unconsciously into the inferior levels. Now, of course, at higher levels of the practice, we can consciously descend into the inferior levels through dreams and, you know, through the astral as a way to explore our psyche, but that's a separate topic. The way this relates to the Kabbalah tree, the tree of life, is that we can see on this play of form, on this diagram, that 
Yasad, the vital body, and Hod, the astral body, and the astro and you know, the mental body and astral body, the fifth dimension, which is beyond the third and the fourth dimension, right? Beyond time and space, there are superior levels of our being. As above, so below. These exist within us and without. They are both inside and outside. We have a microcosm and a macrocosm in the universe. And so that's how this practice directly relates to Kabbalah on a very simple level. And this is, of course, simply, you know, a basic play on form on instruction, but by being in the present, by, you know, by working on being in the present, we begin to awaken in the astral. This practice, you know, it, it takes a long time to go from 0% or 3% consciousness to 100% consciousness. There's a lot of things to work on, being in the present, dissolving egos, etc. But this practice will definitely over time allow us to awaken in the astral. And I can speak from experience there. I am speaking from experience there. The the more I've practiced this, the more lucid uh, dreams I've had, the more astral projections I've had. And when I've fallen off the practice a bit and you know had busier days and weeks of life, those experiences plateaued or they dwindled temporarily and they came back with more practice. And of course, with meditating on dreams and writing them in the journal and all the other things that we've talked about on this channel. That's it for this particular practice. Feel free to ask questions in the comments. I will answer them all to the best of my ability. There's a, there's quite a lot here, I understand, but this was a very foundational practice as well. And if you want to have even longer conversations um, with the other members of the Patreon Discord community, feel free to uh, join us there. Your support is most appreciated. And actually, just a quick thanks to um, Kakashi Hatake, uh, uh, <laughs> uh, our newest member. I, you know, actually in not too a distant past, I'm also have I enjoy Naruto, so that's a that was a fun surprise. Um, I believe Brody as well would be maybe a more appropriate name. Thank you for your support, and I look forward to the next video where we will be talking about a practical method of balancing moods. And I will link the two videos that this practice and that practice are based off of where I originally learned them. Um, that's the Three Mountains YouTube channel. Uh, I'll link that in the description below as well as any other helpful material or links related to this practice. Until next time, thank you for watching.